Hello everybody, it's SCD Med Haven here, and I had a request to do the T95 as of like two hours ago. I saw it and I was like, you know what, we, we, we gotta do this. So I bought back the T95, and the, the matches I had inside this tank, T95 has got to be one of my favorite tier 9 tank destroyers, other than the Yag Tiger and maybe even the 704 from the Russians. But T95 is always going to have a special place in my heart just because of how derpy it can be and how much of a frontline assaulter it can be. So, starting off, you know, let's go ahead and jump into the engine. Kind of feel like we should just skip this part, but, you know, hey, it's how I usually start. So here we go. 780 overall horsepower, 8.89 horsepower. To just, ew. Sorry, I, I uh, gagged a little bit whenever I saw that, uh, number <laughs> this, this thing weighs a lot you're not the fastest on the team but a top speed of 20 you're gonna be able to get the spots as long as you're keeping an eye on your map so best way to do it is to have map knowledge now let's say you're on Himmelsdorf which I just recently had a match on that was fantastic so Let's say the hill, a lot of people like to go hill, but then on the right side, a lot of people, you know, you usually have cleanup crews on the right side that you go to. So the right side is not too bad to go. But 10 reverse speed, it's going to allow you to, you know, hit a corner, back up, angle. The overall power to weight ratio, it's just, it, it could be better, but if it was better, this tank would be just <laughs> feeling like a Hetzer. <laughs> Uh, the gun, the 155 millimeter, which is the final package on it, has a 18.3 second reload, a aiming time of 2.7, and accuracy of 0.4. So gun dispersion at 0.4. You're you're not a you're not a sniper. You're mid range to close quarters, especially with the armor you have. Relying on your team is key. Platooning with this tank and just basing everything around it, T95 can hold a flank. Accuracy on the move, accuracy on rotating turret. Honestly, you can't snapshot in this tank. Those values are pretty low compared to what mediums are and what some heavies are. So max elevation at 20 degrees. If you're trying to take shots from that high up, well, they're just going to go through the top of your tank. So try and avoid maxing out your elevation. Now, 5 degrees of gun depression. It's not the greatest. You're not a ridgeline fighter. You're a city fighter. You are a holder. You're made to decimate an entire roadway, alleyway, just anything in front of you. Now, the tracks in this, 15 degrees, they're, they're, they're slow. You can actually counteract this with 105 octane as a premium consumable. There's a couple of traits out as well. So, clutch braking, smooth ride, and I believe that there's one more, and we'll get into that later. But terrain resistance, so for hard, you have 1.3. For medium, you have 1.4, and for soft, you have 2.3. Terrain resistance, they're pretty high up there, especially since you only have almost 9 power to weight. So, usually you're going to be able to get, mm, let's say, 7.5 on hard. And then, moving over to medium, about 7. Maybe a little bit lower than 7, probably looking about 6.5. And then 2.3, that's really going to drop you down. So, soft terrain is your enemy, but you know what? You got the armor to handle it. The radio range is 745. Nah, we'll get into that later. It's assist damage. I'm looking to make a video on that in the future. Now, here's the fun part. The ammunition. So, I forgot the premium pin and I forgot the high explosive pin. So, we'll be taking a look at the packages after we're done with this. So, I do know the standard pin is 276. Your velocity on your standards, which are AP, so they readjust by 5 degrees on impact, are 870. Your premiums are APCR, and they travel at 1,088 meters per second. So, they readjust by 2 degrees on impact. And they have high explosives. They don't readjust at all, they just go boom. And, just one thing. Splash radius, 3.78. If you shoot the corner of somebody trying to side scrape, you're going to be able to damage them 3.78 meters away. It's going to work like an artillery round, especially since it's a 155. If you shoot under tanks, a lot of tanks, the under part of the tank has the least armor sometimes. So whenever you splash underneath the tank, you're capable of doing 500, 400, rather than shooting the top plate and only doing two or maybe even bouncing off entirely with your high explosive. The crew inside this tank, they're pretty well positioned. You have your commander, 
your gunner, your driver, and I can't remember what the last one is. So, yeah, whatever. It's a T95, man. <laughs> Armor. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, so. 305. Just all around the front of it. Now, the one of the reasons why I stopped playing this tank would probably have to be whenever they debuffed the lower plate and only made it 133 millimeters. Originally, it used to be over 300 an effective armor of like 500 so it was just an auto ricochet and the only way to kill this thing was shooting the hatches but then after they took that away you had to change your play style inside of it or you can keep the same play style which i pretty much kept the same play style because i i just i like hills i like rocks i like pebbles i like corners i like angling i like it all and this tank suits it all so the side armor on this tank once upon a time used to be 152 but they did decrease it down to 101 and then the top there at 63 used to be a lot thicker, but they really dumbed it down because primarily as a tier 9, it was super strong. Now, 63 millimeters that is enough to auto ricochet almost any gun in the game. So, the right angle, you can side scrape. You have no problem side scraping inside this. Actually, I recommend side scraping inside this to try and get that lower plate covered with your front track. Pulling off a nice angle here. Sure, if they're thinking about it, shoot high explosives into the top engine rack there in the back. But you know what? You're covering your lower plate. A lot of people aren't going to load high explosives because of your armor in the front. As soon as they fire, all you had to do is readjust right before they fired, and suddenly they hit the 305 armor and did almost no damage. Now, the gun inside this, comparable to the 60TP at 70mm, you can block shots in a head-to-head -head fight. So, the replay that I have, that's not going to be happening. But, you know, T95. Now, the final thing about the T95. This tank, compared to the Tier 10 variant, is solid. The Tier 10 concealment, not the greatest. If you look over at the right side of concealment, stationary at .32, that is comparable to a light tank when stationary. So, you can be a scout inside the T95. I run binoculars. Um... One match that I would love to try and get into would be proper offkins at the T95. Even though you only have 380 view range, binoculars stacked on top of it, you're going to be breaking 500 meters on your view range. Now, I could be wrong about that, but you're definitely over 480. So, you're definitely past the cap of 445 for spots. So, going down proper offka, it, it'd just be really nice. Now... Yep, got to go over the packages because I can't remember the penetrations for the life of me. So, your standard for the 120, 248, 297, 60. Now, here's the 155. 276, 320, and then 90 millimeters on your high explosives. The high explosives at 90 millimeters, that's a lot of armor pen. You can go through the lower plates of quite a few tanks, like the Conqueror, for instance. If you hit them on the right side in the lower plate, that's where the ammo rack's located. And if you get a penetrating high explosive there, that's almost a guaranteed ammo rack. I mean, it doesn't mean you're going to blow the top off, but hey, you know what? You hit them hard. And the match I got for you today is a second mark match as well. Fisherman's Bay. You gotta love Fisherman's Bay. Ever since they did the rework on this map and added all the new foliage and all the trees and redid the city, the middle's been redone, so many bushes, I, I really like the way that they put this map together. It doesn't matter where you go. You know, it's, it's a new experience every single match on this map. So, we are bottom tier. There's only three tier 10s, but... <laughs> you know what? T95 for the win. We're gonna have some fun with those tier 10s. Now, T95, as I said, you're, you're not the fastest. You want to plan your routes right away. You, you don't want to just wait a minute, wait for everyone to start moving, and then choose a side to go. This tank is capable of going solo and handling it. I mean, if they, if they rush you, you know, you're, you're in for some trouble. But it, it's a T95, man. You're, you're not trying to jump out there and, you know spot everything right away back up and I mean you can but I just I don't recommend it myself so 14.48 is what our reload sitting at right now so from 18.3 to 14.38 that's a whole four seconds knocked off so <laughs> yeah that that's it's actually really nice 
T95, though, it, it's always going to hold a special place in my heart. I, whenever Beta was out and I got my T95, I, it was my first Tier 10 tank destroyer, actually. Well, <laughs> Tier 10. No, it's a 9. I was on the way to get the OE3, but the T95 was just so much fun. But back then, the top speed was like 13. So, yeah, I mean, the trade-off for the update that they put on the T95 to give it the additional 20 kilometers, they gave it 20 kilometers, but they did decrease the armor rating. So, rather than traveling at 14 at the highest you can go downhill, you can now go 20. Unless you're looking at a TOG, which I believe top speed is 13. Just big old boat, go park in a, park in a road and block it. So, Fisherman's Bay, on the left side of the map here, there's a lot of spots you can go. Um, on my live streams, you guys have caught me on the right side, you've caught me on the left side, you've caught me going down the middle. But, it, each tank has a different playstyle. T95, I like to be a little bit more aggressive in. Especially since I have an IS-7 with me. And I chose to move up to try and support the IS-7 because no one else was going to move up. Because we have a couple lightweight tank destroyers behind us, like the Borsig. Now here, this is what I'm talking about for angling. Try and hold that angle. You know, don't give them a chance to ever hit you. And STB-1. So, you know, it's been two minutes in the game. At least we got one shot off. Thought about trying to snap him. Now, STB-1. If you have high enough penetration, aim at the left side of the turret. Left or right, it's kind of flat there, and you're going to go through. If you have enough pen or enough gun dispersion. But lucky for me, uh, RNG was on my side this match. Second shot in for 799. And within two shots, we went from 800 to 2,332. <laughs> I want to hit that light tank so badly. <laughs> and as you see, we got one mark in the tank right now. Um, the past five games that I've played inside my T95... They, they they were just all fun. All of them. I had no problem. Uh, track, we'll drive wheel, side armor straight into the mouse. And now we have a motion. STB1, I'm just waiting for someone to take him out. So, the motion, he's trying to shoot the flyest part of the armor. I'm loading standards, and I know that no matter what angles he's at, unless he does a deep angle... I'm going to go straight through the front of that turret. So, holding a slight angle. And, I don't know, he, he probably was aiming for the lower plate, but couldn't find it because of the tracks that were in the way in the front. Now, right here, this, this is probably one of the coolest things that you can do. Since he's giving us a really steep angle and we can't exactly penetrate him, we decided to try and bounce off of his top armor into the lower part of the turret. So, it worked out for us. And me being me, I'm sitting here like, is that thin enough for me just to overmatch it? Well, no. No, it's not. I bounce off the side armor because of the gun dispersion. Try and hold an angle. He's not even aiming at us. Roger Dodger off in the distance. The Roger Dodger, solid tank. I, I was extremely excited when they added the E75TS to the game. And I still am excited. And right there, I realized I'm never going to overmatch the top of the motion. So, yep, just hold an angle and, you know, there you go. He's shooting the top 63 millimeter plate and he bounces right off. So, while I scroll over here and take a look at the motion, the top armor of the motion is 50 millimeters. It might be 50.2 knowing that we did not overmatch it. Which means you'd need a 156 millimeter gun to go through it. So that's nice to know. Oh, and I answered a comment from uh, the other post about the motion too. Guess what? That top armor might be 50.2, which means it's not going to be overmatched. Now, map awareness. You know, as you're being aggressive, you don't want to just rush in to an area. You always want to try and stay vigilant as much as you can. If if I wasn't and I was just trying to cruise forward, I would have got hit by the OE-4. 
So we've already used our med kit. We've already used our repair kit. And at this moment in time, I'm sitting here like, oh, crap, I am being pounded. I don't even know by what. Looking at the map, I, I see the light tank, and I'm like, ah, the kill you never had the chance. And OE4 puts around into us. We're down to 617 health, and ooh, juicy. <laughs> Goodbye, light tank. Maushin's going to try and pull up. And he does get a shot through. He hit the hatch. Now, right here, trying to work the corner. Trying to bait a shot. Um, the front armor on this, the tracks, uh, I have seen damage go through them and cause damage. I, they're not spaced armor. I don't know if they count as parts of the tank entirely for damage. But so far from the matches I've played, I haven't really noticed if they do or not. Now, I'm thinking I can be aggressive, try and pull out against them, but then I see the E-75 and, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to push out and just sacrifice my 158 hit points. Instead, we're going to try and bait a shot from the OE-4. So, pulling forward, backing up, just trying to give him enough of an angle to make it seem like he's going to go through. Honestly, if he's loading high explosive, it's game over for me because of the 63mm plate. But instead, he decides to try and rush in, and here we are, taking a nice shot straight into his lower plate that he gave us. E75. <laughs> he, he's, he's just chilling. He, he's just like, I'm dead either way. There's, there's no point in trying to stop this. And... High Caliber Mastery Badge, Second Mark, Spartan, Steel Wall, and I believe that is Spotter. Sniper, not Spotter. Spotter's a silver medal with binoculars. So, 15 shots fired, 14 direct hits, and 11 penetrations. And we put most of their Tier 10s through hell <laughs> well you know if you guys want to grind out to get to this tier 9 the t28 is just as fun but t28 versus tier 10s at least you got concealment the t11 oe3 i'm a 50 50 on the oe3 honestly the one thing about the oe3 that i absolutely love has got to be that 275 millimeter hatch but the side armor it doesn't feel as good as the t95 and the concealment difference between 0.32 and the OE3 that's sitting at 0.16, honestly, the T95 overall, I would say it's a better tank, but at the same time, I'd say the OE3 brings a lot more to the field. So, oh look, we got twinsies. We got a T95 two marked and we got an OE3 two marked. T95 though... I had a lot of matches inside this tank today that just I, I wanted to use and I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe we can get that second mark and get a good match out of it. So I played for like another hour and well, you know, if, if you're looking to get the T95 or you already have the T95, just, you know, go, go get a washcloth, wipe the dust off it, bring it out, make it look pretty and just go play a couple of matches and have fun inside of it. I know I did. So... You guys have a wonderful day. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And if you guys have a tank that you want to see, if I have it, I will try my best to get a review out on it. But until then, see you guys tomorrow on the live stream. Oh, wait a minute. Not tomorrow. It's today. It's Saturday. That's right. So this video is going to get uploaded, and then I might start live streaming, I don't know, maybe a few hours after it. So, yeah. Holy crap. It's already Saturday. That's weird. So... Yeah, see you guys in the live stream. Have a great day.